Hello everybody, it's Charles with All American Homestead, working on another project today. As you know, on a homestead there's always projects. So this is the outside of what we call the condo. We use it for multiple different things. This was built by Shelly's brother, and then when he moved and relocated, we were able to get this off of him and use it for our purposes. He built it as a doghouse and we used it for multiple different things. It's kind of our go-to when we get new animals like these little guys that provides a very good shelter. And over the summer, we needed air going through it so as you can see I've opened up a lot of the ends some of them are still closed off we got our heat lamp there and then fan up there for the summer when it gets hot keeps a good breeze going through here we got some company here what's up pumpkin what's up pumpkin you little cutie pies Jasper. You guys, if you ever watch Shelly's videos, these are our two new Cooney Coonies. Little hairy pigs. This little guy, the red one with the black spots, he is about four months old. And the other one I think is just a little bit older than him. I'm not exactly sure on the day. But down here you can see we've put wire over the whole exterior. We had larger animals in here at that time. And then as we've used it for other things, we've used it for chickens and different stuff like that. So we've put chicken wire over the bottom to kind of enclose it more. We'll probably end up doing more chicken wire on a lot of these other windows eventually, depending on what we end up using it for. But, when we get weather, we usually get weather from the northwest, which is that way. So, today I'm gonna to try to at least get the front here closed off, which will block off most of the wind and the rain from getting in here that way about the only way it gets in is through here still debating as to whether I want to enclose this doorway off a little bit more I'll have to sit there and decide on that later and I'm gonna close off that opening over here so that way this back side here at least for now will still be open for ventilation and they can get good air but the main source of, you know, it's getting cold here, starting to drop down, and preparing for winter is not one of those projects you want to start doing all at once, right when you need it. Because there's always more projects, and there's more. Now, come on. Little guy's trying to get out. Always stuff to do, so. You know you got projects to do, and you got good weather like today. You take advantage of it. So, that's what we're working on. I might not be the most professional on these videos. I'm just starting to do it. This is something my fiance wanted to do so we can kind of help other people out, share our experiences and knowledge, and give people access to the things that bring us joy. We love to be surrounded by animals and it's a lot cheaper than therapy. <laughs> There's many days I've come home stressed, wore, wore out, hurting or something like that. And I'll just go spend an hour just either playing with the ducks, geese, cows, pigs. It really takes a lot of the stress out of you. I mean, life has a lot to sit there and weigh you down and all these guys here kind of help lift you back up. Even my geese. They have their own kind of unique deals. So, I'm going to sit here and work on this. I'm 
not going to sit there and record the process of doing it. I've got this blue poly pipe that I had a roll of. And I really don't have any more plastic that I used before. And as with anything else these days, I went and priced some not too long ago. And the price for a decent roll of thick plastic is out of my budget. You know, we we live paycheck to paycheck and stuff like that. I'm a disabled veteran and stuff like that. And currently out of work because of medical reasons. And Shelly struggles with her hands. So it's, you know, we do what we can. So when prices get high like that, you use what you get. So even though it's going to probably end up looking a little tacky, I'm going to use this blue poly pipe plastic, which should be thick and heavy duty. And uh, I'll sit there and show you what it looks like afterwards and kind of show you where I, where I end up at. Still continuing on with the project, kind of showing you where I'm at now. I'm using this poly pipe, double layer, kind of some stuff I had left over laying around and instead of just burning it or throwing it away, I'm using it to patch up these empty spots because plastic is just kind of costly. So I attach it to the top, staple it down on the supports, down to the bottom, and I use a piece of wood or trim to cover the bottoms and the tops and then I'll do one somewhere down in the middle to kind of give it that extra support to kind of protect it from the weather and the wind. It's not going to be the prettiest thing when it's done but it should be nice and solid, nice stable, do the job and ought to give the animals that are inside a nice level of protection against the wind and the rain and the snow and hopefully even the cold because during the winter we'll probably have a heat lamp on in here and that'll help hold that heat in there a little bit better instead of just all that air moving around getting pulled out so as you can see here it is before and after I'm able to kind of staple it down here pretty solid on the bottom I'll probably end up running a piece of you know I'll have to clean that up a little bit but down here through the seam because I don't have a support there like I do here and on the edges I'll probably end up running a piece of duct tape down through there to try to seal that up a little bit, give a, a little bit of extra protection or anything, but using what I got to sit there and take care of what I got, it's kind of the story of the American dream. Everything's so expensive now, it's kind of harder, but that's what makes it more and more important to have your own set of skills, be able to do this stuff, paying somebody to build stuff and get things set up for winter and everything, you know, they're going to come. They're going to go get a load of lumber from the store, come out here with your tools, and they're going to probably do a good job, most professionals do, but it's going to cost you. And most of us that are living on a homestead are doing it to kind of give ourselves a bit of a, not to get away from society, but to give ourselves a buffer from society to where, you know, we live more as a community. I know my neighbors around here, they're very good people, they're always helping me out, I help them out when we can. When our garden gets a lot of stuff, I've driven around with the wagon on the back of my four-wheeler, handing out watermelons, zucchinis, cucumbers and stuff, and not charging nothing. You know, we're starting to do better with our chickens. We're going over to Brahma's. So that way, we've already got a couple customers in the neighborhood that buys all of our eggs. So we're trying to increase our flock. Shelly hatched out a bunch of chickens. She's talked about that before. And... We got them all separated, so here in a couple weeks, once we know that uh, the chickens are not receptive to the Americana roosters that was running around with them. For those who don't know, and I had to do some research on this, is that if a rooster is around a hen, even though you pull them off, that hen is still receptive to that rooster's genetics for another two weeks. So in order to clean a hen out, if you want it, a certain hen to breed with a certain rooster you need to have them separated for at least two weeks from any other roosters before you know that the egg she's going to lay is from that genetic line so before too long I'm down to two buff Brahma hens that are old enough to lay and a few of the white Brahmas we have a lot of uh, light Brahma 
that we are raising and we actually was able to hatch out a very good looking light Brahma rooster you can see him there those were very hard to find when I was sitting there looking for Brahmas uh, you've ordered chickens from McMurray Hatchery and looked around at other places and in the last two years they've either been completely sold out or unavailable or something like that so we've got a hold of a few at the swap meet Shelly loves going to the swap meets we've only missed one here lately and that's because we made a trip up to Missouri to see family and uh, we've got quite a few hens for the light Brahmas as you can see but we've only got probably a half a dozen buff Brahmas out of that batch so hopefully we can finish selling these Americana and buff mixes or runs what do you want to call them We've had some interest, but once we get rid of these, we can separate those buff Brahmas from the light Brahmas, wait a couple weeks, and whatever eggs they lay from that point in time, we will mark them and hatch them out and try to increase our numbers of the buff Brahmas. So those who hatch when it comes to chickens, if you hatch them at a 99.6 degree temperature steady, it's supposed to give you the best chances for hatching hens. And for what we did, Shelly ended up hatching out probably a hundred chicks. We lost some because young chicks are just fragile and in the weather we had a bad storm that came through one time and took a few of them with it. But uh, I think out of about a hundred chicks, can confirm about probably seven or eight roosters and uh, I would say that's pretty good odds for you know hatching out what you want as you can tell the uh, nose bleeds are ranting and raving they don't give people too much peace they're pretty cool guys though you can come down here they'll come talk to you and stuff but they like to cause a racket, having a civilized conversation with somebody becomes a bit difficult when they're worked up. And they hang out sometimes with this turkey here, which we raised from a youngin. These three white guineas that we raised from little chicks. And then Jerry has started hanging out with these guys. We got him at a swap meet full grown. And he has actually become pretty docile hanging out with everybody else. When we first got him, I never had a problem with him, but Shelly had a, a, a big problem with him as far as his aggression went. Anytime she would go in the cage, he would go after her. And she would get to the point she would not even go into the pen because he would be so aggressive. And he never showed that aggression towards me or anyone else that I know but since he's you know got adjusted we kept him in the pen for quite a while and then started letting him out now once he knew this was home he has calmed down quite a bit so as you can see he hangs out around doesn't cause too much fuss or problems talks to us once in a while but kind of got to the point he's hanging out with uh this little turkey we're hoping she's uh a hen a female whatever you call female turkeys I'm not an expert on those yet and these three guineas hang out with that turkey all the time and then sometimes the geese here Jack Joe and Jill and the gang the blue Toulouse's will hang out with them and other times <laughs> they'll face off you'll have seven geese against three guineas and a turkey and I tell you what, them guineas are the smallest birds in the bunch, but they don't care. They've got a heck of a spirit to them. They will go after a full-grown geese and run them off. So, got a little distracted from the project. So, I'll sit there and uh, kind of get back on here and show you the, the finished 
project once I get it done and everything like that. I get back to work on this. I'll do this here, and I'll also sit there and get this front covered up here. This is where most of the wind and the rain and snow and everything is going to blow in, so I'm going to get that covered up. And uh, see what it looks like when I get done. Thanks for joining me. All right, guys, picking up some scraps and stuff here. We got that there done. I will be looking around for some scrap pieces of wood to uh, trim that in a little bit better on the corner. But that's the outside there. All right, guys, come on, let me in. Let me in. Come on. And here we are on the front side. Still got to put a piece of trim down along the bottom. And on the inside, we have that blocked in now. We have the front blocked in. A little bit of a gap there. I'm going to figure out whether or not I'm going to end up doing something with that or not. Shouldn't allow too much to really come in, but... I would like it if it was a little less prominent, so that I'll have to sit there and either put something along the top to take care of that. I got a piece of wire out here, which is, or netting, which is part of the canopy over the coop. Keep out hawks and owls and stuff most of the time. I've caught a couple in here with them. So now, all we have is this window here. That'll let some air in for a while, and then the doorway, which should give them plenty enough shelter for now as it cools off, and when the cold really gets here, I'll be blocking off this window as well, and figuring out exactly what I'm going to do with this doorway. If I'm going to sit there and kind of box that in a little bit more where we're at the dunk to get in it, or just kind of leave it. But... There we go. So, got that project done today. Appreciate you watching and kind of hanging out with us on the All-American Homestead. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless and have a good day.